Jared here with CarBuzz.com, and this week I am testing the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now, this is a really interesting vehicle because at the front, it looks like a normal SUV, but at the back, it has a pickup truck bed. This is one of two new compact pickup trucks along with the Ford Maverick that kind of directly rivals it that are really going to offer you a much smaller, more fuel-efficient alternative to a mid-sized truck like a Toyota Tacoma or a Ford Ranger. So in this video, I'm going to give you a full walk around of the Hyundai Santa Cruz. We also have a full driving review of it as well up on our channel. Be sure to check that out. But this is going to be a more in-depth look. We're going to show you all the buttons, all the switches, and talk more candidly about the truck. So let's start with the exterior. Come here and look at this amazing grill design. Hyundai calls this their shield grill. It's the same one that you get on the Tucson, so the two cars look very familiar up front. The headlights are actually integrated into the grill here, which looks really cool. You kind of can't see them until they're on. The main headlights are actually down here. These are just the DRL running lights and you'll notice that we have this sort of shadow chrome finish here um, on this one because we have the limited trim that's the most expensive version of the Santa Cruz you can get the other versions of this truck have like more of a silver finish here so let's go over to the side profile where we've got 20 inch wheels I love the design pattern looks very bold and rugged here on the limited trim the lower versions of the Santa Cruz are gonna get smaller 18 inch wheels. Now, the other thing that's interesting here is you'll notice these wheel arches, they're plastic uh, cladding. Um, that's really great so you don't get rock chips or door dings. You have this little uh, Santa Cruz sort of design here. This is the design brief for the truck, like the concept when it was only a picture before it was a, really tr uh, before it was a real truck that was kind of unique. And the truck is actually significantly longer. It rides on the same platform as the Tucson, but it is longer the wheelbase is longer too that actually makes it a little bit more comfortable than the Tucson but it's significantly shorter than even like the shortest Tacoma you can get so in terms of parking it I do like the Santa Cruz more than some of the midsize options like the Tacoma and the Ford Ranger we've got this interesting C pillar here you see this is where it starts to differ very greatly from the Tucson SUV because we have a bed in the back. Hyundai actually doesn't call this a truck. They call it a sport adventure vehicle, which it's a made up word that really means nothing. Um, basically, they wanted you to not really compare this to other trucks because it's not as capable as something like a Ranger, although it actually tows 5,000 pounds with the bigger engine, which is quite significant. So you see we have that little opening uh, window there at the rear, and we've got this four foot bed, which is not very big. So if you were gonna put something like a mountain bike on it, you'd either have to take the front wheel off or hang it over the tailgate here. But there are some cool features here. So here at the back, we've got these really cool T style uh, taillights here. We've got this little badge here that says H-Track. That's our all wheel drive system that you get standard if you get the two and a half liter turbocharged engine instead of the base engine we've got these little bed steps right here so I can go ahead and put my foot on it but the problem is you'll see there's really nowhere to grab up here so I find it when I use the bed step it's just a little bit awkward I can't really like get my hand on it too well um, but now we're gonna open the bed because there is some really interesting stuff to talk about here we've got the tailgate that says Santa Cruz and real small Hyundai I've had a lot of people look at this truck and almost not even know who makes it until they notice that little Hyundai badge I go ahead and drop it down it is is damped so it doesn't just crash down which is quite nice that's standard as is the bed liner here that's standard which does not come standard on the Ford Maverick so as you can see we have the nice bed liner here we've also got this Tanau cover uh, this comes standard as well if I go ahead and push this little uh, trigger where it says Hyundai I can go ahead and slide it back real nice and easy. It does take up some space here at the back out of that four foot bed. So we already don't have a lot of space here and this takes up a little bit. Now this does come standard. So I, I don't think you could take this out but you do get it as standard. So I might as well keep it. So it does kind of limit your capability just a little bit. But as you can see, we have plenty of space in there. We also have uh, these little areas right here. So you would put like a piece of plywood right here across there and then you could maybe mount stuff uh, two tiered here in the bed we also have our railing system built in here along with some bed lights which is quite nice on both sides we have these little lockable uh, storage areas here so you can just undo those you can see we also have a little outlet in there that's great if you were tailgating and you wanted to plug something in Speaking of tailgating, gotta show you the party piece of this, of this bed right here, which is this little trunk. You can see right here it says open, 
uh, we have a little button right here that I can push and that's going to open up the hidden trunk. Now this is a feature that we've seen on the Honda Ridgeline, but Hyundai does it pretty well. Um, you can see we have a decent amount of space in here and I even have a little drain plug in here. So I've gone ahead and pulled that and you see that drains right out of the bottom of the truck. So if you were tailgating, you could fill the whole thing with ice, throw some, so throw some beers or soda, what have you in there. And then as soon as the ice melts, just pull the plug and it'll drain right out, which is quite cool. So I think the capability is definitely there on this. Um, the one thing that my videographer pointed out to me is that because this isn't an SUV and there's no way to fold this tailgate open into the bed, you maybe couldn't carry quite as long of objects as you could in an SUV, but you can get a little bed extender um, that kind of cuts off this portion here and then you fold it this way and then you could have this little bit of extra bed length with the tailgate down. So that is something to consider if you need to carry longer items. So now let's check out the back seat where it's pretty similar to like a compact SUV here. Um, the extra wheelbase gives you a little bit more uh, leg room, but not so much. The Ford Maverick has a little bit more than this does. I do like how we have the little netting right here and they have little cutouts for my knees to give me a little bit more room. I'm only five foot eight, but as you can see, I, I fit pretty comfortably back here. There's a nice, um, uh, tilt to to the seat. I don't feel like I'm sitting bolt upright like I do in some other pickup trucks. I recently reviewed the Nissan Frontier and I actually think that this back seat is a more comfortable place to sit. We've also got air vents and USBs. I'm going to slide over so that my camera guy can come and show you that. We've got the air vents back here. You can plug in two USB devices as well. So that is quite practical. Um, we've got our cup holders here in the armrests. Um, cause I don't think there is a folding armrest. Yeah. There's no armrest conventionally here. So that's where your cup holders are. We also have some storage underneath here. Um, so if you go ahead and pull this little tab here on the side, ugh, you've got a little bit of storage here. This is our Jack, but you can go ahead and take that out. And this storage goes all the way across. So if I go ahead and open up, so it folds, um, 60, 40, um, there you go. So now we can have all of our storage under here. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out the front seat here. Because I think this is where the Santa Cruz is a little bit uh, nicer than the Ford Maverick. We've got the limited trim, which is about $40,000. The base price of this truck is about $24,000. We've got these really nice leather seats that almost look like they could have come out of a Genesis car. That's how nice they are. I love this orange stitching that you get. That's an option. You don't have to get that. You also get this little orange accent up on the dash. That's kind of cool too. It's kind of funky. Definitely an ultra modern vibe here. The Maverick feels a lot more like you're sitting in a truck. It's got like rivets and bolts and stuff like exposed to make you kind of feel like you're in a basic but chic kind of truck. This feels much more like an SUV. So I'm going to go ahead and take the camera so I can show you in a little bit more detail what else you get here on the cabin. So I mentioned this is the limited trim. So we have pretty much every bell and whistle that you can get, including push button engine start. So let's go ahead and do that. It would help if I had the key in the vehicle. It was on the door, so it wasn't sensing it there. So let's go ahead and start it up now. I'm gonna go ahead and close this door. I'm gonna ask my videographer to close the other door so that I can show you every feature in here. We've got a larger 10.25 inch touchscreen, which we'll see on other Hyundai and Kia models. I don't love the icons here. I think they look a little bit like a Windows XP uh, graphic, which is a little bit weird, um, but the graphics are fine. We've got like the big map here. I just think the icons look a little bit weird. We've got a full color map, and I love the fact that you can just pull up your split screen here. So now you can have another map if you had your radio here, and you can quickly shift between what you want here on the secondary screen and quickly pull it away too, which is quite nice. So I do like this, however, um, there is a disadvantage to getting this bigger screen on the limited trim, which is you still get wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, but they are not wireless. If you get the smaller screen, which is only eight inches, those two function wirelessly. But if you get the bigger screen, you don't get that feature, which is a little bit annoying. The other thing I don't love are these climate controls down here. You can see it's sort of this gloss black, which is 
annoyingly reflective and you see there's lots of dust on it. So I don't love that aspect of it. And I don't love how finicky the controls are. You have to tap these button zones. You really have to take your eyes off the road to do this. If you get a lower trim version, the one right below this, you get, um, you still get these, but you get the smaller screen and you get a volume knob so you don't have to fiddle with the touch controls. And if you get the two base engine versions of this, this car, the SE and the SEL, you get manual climate controls that you can adjust with a knob. Um, so that might even be one reason why I wouldn't want to get this top trim, just to avoid these finicky touch controls. I really hope for the 2023 model year, Hyundai just does away with these because I think they're silly. Uh, down below, we have plenty of storage space right here. We've got a USB, we've got a 12 volt. We also have, this is a wireless charging pad and we have another USB right here. Plenty of storage space. We've got our two cup holders right here. We've got our shifter. I like that it's a normal T style shifter, not the push button stuff you get in the Tucson. If I throw it into reverse, you see we get this really nice 360 degree camera, which you can change the angles of. I love this view too. You can see my camera guy, Austin, right there. Uh, and you can also see um, as you turn the wheels, you can see how close you're getting to the curb, which is quite nice. So you're never gonna curb a wheel. That's um, only available on the top limited trim. We also have some minor off-road controls. You can lock it into all wheel drive. It operates mostly front wheel drive most of the time. Um, you can trigger the parking cameras with this button. And then this is like a hill to control and then we also have our controls for the heated steering wheel heated and ventilated seats here as well and then we have some glove box storage right here and now let's focus on the steering wheel it's the same one you get on the tucson it's very cool i like these silver elements right here you can change what's here on this digital gauge cluster you only get the digital gauge cluster on the limited trim um, it's pretty cool we've got our drive mode selector down here so if i go ahead and toggle that you see it changes for sport mode the other gauges pretty much look the same and the other cool feature is that if i put on the turn signals here which i love the turn signals by the way look at that knurling that's just hyundai doing really nice design without being too expensive it just makes this feel more premium when i put on the turn signals you see i get a camera that shows what's in my blind spot that is a great feature that hyundai has been doing for a few years now so yeah the cabin in here really nice very premium we're going to go ahead and wrap up by talking about the engine options so let me go ahead and pop what's under the hood and we'll go talk about it. All right. So under the hood, the Santa Cruz has a four cylinder engine, two and a half liters. It has 191 horsepower, which is fine. Uh, but we've got the big boy engine, which is available on the top two trims. So it's still a two and a half liter engine, but this one gets a turbocharger. So it produces 281 horsepower. So about 100 horsepower more and 311 pound feet of torque. Those numbers are both better than what you get in the two liter EcoBoost, EcoBoost version of the Ford Maverick, which is this car's main rival, which is why it can tow a little bit more. Now, interesting. Interestingly, your fuel economy does not take a big hit if you get this engine. You also get an eight-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission that I talk a little bit more about in my full review. It's very smooth, very quick shifting, uh, very different than the regular eight-speed automatic that you get on the base version of this truck. And as a giant garbage truck pulls up behind me, I think that is my cue to end this video. But I hope you've enjoyed this walk around of the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. And remember, be sure to check out that full video that we've shot also on our channel. Be sure to also look for our first drive review of the Ford Maverick, which is also a great compact truck that I would definitely recommend. You should definitely cross shop it with the Santa Cruz.